Hello, Steve White, Steve White's 89. Um, I was a bit surprised by this. Um, now, the film, um, Gran Torino, I didn't see this in the cinema. I totally stumbled across this. I bought it at Cash Converters for like, like $2, along with a bunch of other films, and I thought it was the film where um, Clint Eastwood is playing an elderly man who um, becomes a drug mule for some reason um, to help his family or something. And I, was, I sort of saw the preview for that back in the day and thought, how the hell does that work? Wasn't that a real story? I just sort of, I thought, I, sh I, I want to see that one. I want to know how the hell that works. <laughs> so I bought it, and then I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, this is not that film. This is about an old guy in his car. What the hell? And I thought, ah, oh, fine, I'll watch it. So one day I sat down and watched it, and, um, oh, that sounded weird. I found it was really a great film. I was really um, moved by it and affected by it. It was... As I often, um, I just put videos on in the background while I'm, I'm at my computer doing work, and it takes a good film to get me out of my chair and standing in front of my TV in the corner, um, actually watching like the screen and watching scenes. But I, I spent half of the film getting up to watch scenes because it was a very good, very powerful film, and there's a couple of moments where I was like hands over face, oh my godding. Um, so I was really surprised to hear that one of the actors from the film now seems to regret being in it. Now, um, <laughs> the main character, Clint Eastwood's character, he plays a, um, well, he's racist um, to a degree, and that's sort of the confusing part about the character. When you first see him, he says the most disgusting, vile things. Um, they're not funny. They're sort of cringeworthy. You sort of... You, you don't really laugh at him. I didn't laugh at the jokes. Now, apparently, part of the issue was that um, the, the the young actor, who he was young then, he's now 30, um, Bing Vang, um, he felt that the jokes were, um, that, the, that they were jokes, and they considered jokes and that um, the audience was laughing at them, and that they were racist and they were laughing at them, and that sort of con has contributed to um, the current sort of atmosphere and sort of the, the culture of... Um, how people like look at Asian people and racism and it's not being taken as seriously as it should. He thinks the film contributed to that. Now, I think he's very wrong. Um, I think he totally... Whether this is... Because this, this film came out in 2008 and I think he's talking about when he saw it in the cinema um, that a lot of people laughed at it. I think he mistook a lot of people laughing out of... Un, like discomfort because this character was so racist and so cringy. I don't. I, I doubt at this big Hollywood premiere, if that's where he saw it, there would have been a lot of genuinely racist people sitting there laughing at the film. Um, and uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure if he's he's had friends who said this or he went and looked, looked saw the film in different screenings. Um, but that seems to be his issue: is that he felt that people were laughing at. The, the jokes against... Um, I don't even consider them jokes. Like, people keep referring to them as jokes. Basically, the actor, the character, says these really offensive, racist things. Um, and he's a, he's a horrible, miserable person. He's, um, he's a Vietnam vet who... who uh, his wife has just died. He's living alone. His family are a-holes. His kids are a-holes. Um, he's not happy. Um, he's just waiting to die. And um, it's it's it's... It's a really sad movie in some ways. The start, like when you see his life at the start of it, and you also realise that he was a hero. He did um, do a lot. He had this wife that he loved, obviously, um, and now this is just what his life is. And then, what happens in the film, of course? Because when I first started watching this, I'm like, "What the hell is this? Like, is this, like, was it, he some racist guy? Like, what the hell?" Is, I didn't know where the film was going. I didn't hadn't seen the preview, didn't know any of the reviews, knew nothing about it. Just put it on. So I'm like, "Ah, I bought it. I might as well watch it." Um, like while I was doing stuff, like I was expecting to not really pay much attention to it. And eventually he sees this family. He sees them just as people. He sees them as part of his community. He sees them as people that need help. Um, basically this boy is the, the, the older, um, because the, the, basically their, their family of, um, Hmong Asian people who were a lot of, um, people who apparently migrated to um, America because they actually helped the Americans out in the war. I don't know the exact politics of it, but 
Um, it's the first time I ever knew of them. The fact that they were getting this attention in this sort of film was, um, I mean, like I said, I didn't even know they existed. Um, I never heard the name. Um, so I think on some level this film was also doing a little bit to educate some people about immigration and why people immigrate. Um, and then the, part of the problem in the film was that um, this kid was, there were gangs that were trying to get him into the gangs, he didn't want to do it, um, he didn't want to be part of it, but he didn't really know how to stand up for himself. He wasn't so much scared of these people, he just didn't know how to fight. And this guy, who's obviously a fighter, just looked at him and said, this boy needs like a father figure who needs some help and um, he basically becomes like a father figure, they become friends, he becomes a friend of the family, he, there's some difficulty, <laughs> he says some horrible things, but then he realises what he's doing, he eventually stops saying what he's saying, he, he realises, he learns, that's the whole point of the film, you, the, the, the character, it's all, you know, part of the plot, it's, it's, it's all, you know, part of the development of the character. You need it. You need to have these, this language to, to make the character work. It's hard to, hard to explain. This sounded so much clearer in my head when I was, like, reading this and that. But um, I think he's definitely taking the comments now out of context um, and the things that the character says out of context now. Because, like I said, they're, they're all early in the film... And once he, you know, becomes part of this people, they take him into their family and he has dinner with them and he, and he um, protects them and stuff. And he eventually, without giving away the end of the film, um, goes very far for, the, for, the, for these people because they are now his family. Um, and it's quite a beautiful film in, in a way. And this, he, it's so frustrating now to see someone attacking this film, which I think ultimately is a good film about racism. It shows racism in many ways, and you get a good example. Like, even if you were a racist person thinking, watching this film and laughing at the comments at the start, by the end of the film, you're not going to be looking at these people the same way. You're not going to be looking at um, Clint Eastwood's character in the same way. So I think ultimately is a good film. It has aged well. It came out in 2008. I think I watched it last year. Um, it aged very well. Um, I liked the, the, the actor, the actor Bing Lee, Bing Vang in it. Bing Lee, who the hell is Bing Lee? B. Vang, who am I thinking? Bing Lee, is that a person? No. Um, he was good in it. Um, he obviously hadn't worked in much, he hasn't worked much since, and a lot of people are attacking him saying, oh, he just wants attention because he hasn't been in a film since that film. Not true, he's actually been in a film just last year called, um, Commissary. And he was in a TV series called Boy Luck Club, um, and he also he was in an episode. He did did um, a parody of a scene from the film in 2010, and then he didn't do anything except uh, he was in an episode of um, uh, Modern Family as himself. And then he's in this film Commissary, like last year 2020, sorry, and Boy Luck Club 2020. So he has worked. It's not like he's just had no work. He just needs attention. Um, he has a short film he's working on now. It's being produced. So I don't know why he's doing this. I mean, there's a lot of attention again about um, racism against Asian people because of all the um, horrible acts of racism that have been happening since Donald Trump started using blaming the Asian people for um, China's um, involvement in the um, um, the COVID crisis, um, like using terms like you know the the, the um, the Kong flu and the, you know, the China virus and that. So just spreading that sort of hatred and animosity towards the Asian people. People are now blaming the Asian people for it and blaming them for losing their jobs or losing their money. And, and these pathetic people are not just attacking Asian people in general, but they're particularly attacking elderly Asian people because I guess they're just that cowardly. And there, there's been videos. I tried to avoid them and then I stumbled into one and they showed the family of... Um, one of one of these elderly people that was killed and I just was crying for like half the night. It just really upset me. Um, so there's a lot of, with the Chi Chinese New Year and all that, there's a, there's a bit of attention that's been on that and um, Daniel Day Kim and I think, oh, I can't remember that, I, I, the Asian actor from Star Wars again, Donnie somebody, I cannot remember his name. God, I'm bad with names in general. Um, 
they've been doing a lot of press and trying to get it talked about because it, I, I didn't I knew it started happening with Trump and all that, but I didn't realize it kept going. I didn't realize it was just you know so it's something we need to draw attention to. It's something that we need to stop. Um, and but I don't think this film is part of it. I don't think it's contributing to that. I think this film does a lot towards. Um, battling racism because it gives an example of a racist man who is ridiculous and cringeworthy and hideous and then he learns and he becomes a hero and I just I can't see anything wrong with the film um, all of the language is in context it's not it's at the expense of the racist character it's not at the expense of the Asian people so I don't know why he's looking at it like this now I'm not quite sure what this is about I don't know if he's just remembering how he had a negative memory back in the day and he's associating it with that or I don't know I don't think he's just doing this for attention um, he could have done that years ago when he wasn't acting he's currently acting now so I don't know but I just found this really weird and I just wanted to comment on it because I just I just really really was moved by the film like just like last year um, and I'm kind of really surprised that the actor is looking at it like this um, and I'm not quite sure what it's about but um yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Have you seen the film? Watch it. It's great. Um, I probably should have done a review, in a way, now um, of it. But um, it's one of those films where the way it go you, you can't give away the ending or how the film develops or it kills it. So reviewing it would just... Yeah, it's one of those films you can't review because then the real is seeing it. Just watch it. It's really, really good. Um... I don't think there's anything wrong with the, the language um, in context, and I don't think there's any way to view it out of context. I don't think anyone is going to watch that film and see Walt and think of him as a hero at the early part of the film when, he, when he's acting the way he does. And if they do, they're too far gone anyway. I don't think the film is creating or contributing to the, that sort of person. But um, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Bye.